Oh. Hey, uh, I, I didn't see you there. Me? Oh, um, it's just a little side thing I got going on. It's not anything particularly important. No, just, it was nothing actually. It was just, I was just hanging out. Anyway, yeah, you can actually follow me on TikTok at Gunner TV. I have one TikTok, but more to come. I'm really excited for it. And I think you should be too. So make sure you're following me already or else you're gonna miss out on a lot of good stuff. We just don't know what the good stuff is yet, but when it does come out, it's gonna be really good stuff. I promise. Anyways, welcome back to My Hair Doesn't Look Good Long. Today's stunt was brought to you by Tim G, which has generously given us the riskiest stunt I've ever pulled off. And I did pull it off for sure. Leave a comment with your stunt suggestions for the next video and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss next week's stunt. Too Hot to Handle, the number one show on Netflix. I know I'm about a week late to this, but I wanted to talk about it because I think it's funny. And it's kind of the exact reality TV show we need right now in a time where we all unanimously hate one specific thing that I won't say by name, we can take that hate and push it somewhere else onto stupid people. I'll give you a brief synopsis if you haven't heard about it already. You take the dumbest and horniest people in the world, you put them on a private beach island with bottomless booze and offer them $100,000 to not have sex with each other or anything sexual for that matter. You know that situation that all single people in the world have had to deal with for the last month, except we're also simultaneously losing money? Yeah, that. But these people act like it's the worst possible thing that could have ever happened to them. Oh my God. <laughs> this is it. This is the worst horror movie you could ever think of. It's like I lost my mom, like I'm so sad. It's like you lost your mom? That's a bit much, no? These people almost convince you to feel sorry for them being in a position between sex and money. The first thing I want to talk about this show is the production, which is hilarious. Yeah, 10 contestants, give them six beds. Team building exercises, have them do bondage to learn about trust. How should we reward people that are doing well with their genuine connections? Uh, well, let's give them a private suite with a giant king bed that they can fuck in. <laughs> no matter how the show spins it, they want a train wreck to happen because they know that's what the viewers ultimately want. So, spoiler alerts from here on out, because I'm be talking about some of the stuff that unfolds over the season. If you haven't seen it, don't. It's nothing crazy. It's not a great show, but uh, just keep watching this video. So first, let's talk about the cast because there are some characters on this show. They all have these little intros for themselves that I'm sure the producers told them to be the worst possible version of themselves for because they come across as absolute douchebags. I don't really have lines. I don't really have like a strategy. Basically, I just walk into a bar and take my shirt off. Sorted. I would rate myself a 10 out of 10. What I'm most proud of is my penis. We'll get Haley out of the way first because everyone seems to hate her. I like the international vibe. Harry's from Australia and I literally have no idea where that is. She's so unlikable that the producers of the show kick her off by episode four because she's just pissing everybody off. You also have Matt who they try to frame as this weird hippie dude but he's actually very normal and funny and probably my favorite person on the show. You also got Chloe and David who are the nicest people on the show but have trouble making any relationships work which makes them very boring. Kells is an absolute beast who I thought would beat the living shit out of people over the course of the season, but it never happens. Nicole, I don't know why she was on the show. She has maybe five seconds of screen time. You have Sharon and Rhonda, the relationship everyone is pretty cool with and no one really cares if they break the rules, though they rarely do. And lastly, you have the crowd favorites, Harry and Francesca. Harry is the Australian that says very strange things only an Australian accent can get away with. How are we? Okay. Naughty little quesadillas, what's happening? And you can get quite a good rhythm. Perfect, these beds are gonna be sweet for what type of carnage that I wanna do to Francesca. And I'm also pretty sure he has major heart problems that he should get checked out. My heart's racing. My heart was beating so fast. My heart's beating so fast. Francesca seems to go back and forth between having your sympathy and also hating her. Couple that with some shot acting scenes when the producers try to use her to stir up drama and she becomes an annoying but pretty necessary role to the show. I think what Harry and I have is like super rare and like I don't think that I'm gonna be able to find it again. And So that's our cast for the most part. So let's transition into making fun of our host which is a glorified Alexa that they call Lana. I will observe the guests and analyze their behavior in order to help them on the path towards better relationships. Once 12 hours has elapsed, 
they'll have to adhere to the rules of this retreat. The show tries to make it out to seem like Lana is this all-powerful AI system that the show poured tons of money into when it's obviously just a Bluetooth speaker that's playing text-to-speech. Contestants, we've built this AI robot capable of knowing everything that you're feeling and thinking. Never mind the cameras that are already filming you 24-7. This AI robot can see every electrode firing off in your brain. It already knows that you're a piece of shit. They also have a narrator for the show who's this sassy woman who's just kind of cringy. In less than 12 hours, our sexed up singles will be hit with a no sex sucker punch. I'm talking full on bang bang. So welcome to Too Hot to Handle. You've met the cast, you know the rules, you've met your AI overlord. So let's get into the end. They're already hooking up. That was quick. This is only episode two. This loses them $3,000, but no biggie. So everyone begins to have their kind of early flirting relationships while the behind the scenes interviews become very, very repetitive. It's just always talking about how hot other people are and how tempted they are, but oh, they can't do anything about it because of the rules. The closer I've gotten to Rhonda, <laughs> boy, the harder it is to refrain from sex. Like, oh, Rhonda looks so hot. I wish I could just, ah. Oh. But the rules, we get it. You wanna fuck, but you can't. We get it. That's why the show kind of fails because by episode two, you're like, well, this was a one trick pony. Now what else are we gonna watch except them try to fuck? And I want them to fuck. We all want them to fuck. That's the whole point of the show. So I don't know why they try to pass it off like they don't want them to fuck. We all want them to fuck. <laughs> Just be honest with us, that's all we want. By the end of episode three, they introduce a new single to the island to like spice things up. And of course, what's a new cast member without a really douchey intro? Oh, I'm from Los Angeles. I live on my boat in Marina Del Rey. When the boats are rocking, don't come a knocking, you know what I mean? I probably have sex every day. I'll wake up with whoever she is, and I'll just think, man, I can't wait to go out tonight and meet a different girl. <laughs> and then the producers really play up his walk to the group like he's some legendary god figure. Shut up. Did I miss a workout class? Who's that? Holy shit, look at that average looking dude. Yeah, he's new, he must be pretty cool. And at this point you kind of realize how fake the show is because Bryce seems like the biggest douchebag of them all, but the same with the rest of them. By the next episode, he seems like a pretty decent guy. They also give him these watches later in the show that light up green if they get a genuine connection with somebody that gives them a free pass to hook up with them. Well, what the fuck? If you're one of these serial hookup artists, as they claim, these people will just fake genuine connections in order to hook up with people. It's not that hard. You just gotta give the camera some sappy BS love line and, oh, make out time. God, girl, you're such a beautiful, caring person with a beautiful soul and I love you? Yes, let's go. Come here. Also, something I found hilarious, Sharon and Rhonda have this moment at the beach where he gets the green light and they get to hook up, but I guess they didn't have a close-up shot of his wristwatch lighting up, so I guess they did it in post. But in post, I think they forgot that Sharon is black because maybe I'm crazy or it's a crazy lighting thing, but that arm is 100% Caucasian. What I was really upset about is in the end, they just split the cash prize between all of them. You are all winners. Which means each person got about $6,000. Don't get me wrong, $6,000 is $6,000, but it just seems way less cool than a $100,000 grand prize. So all in all, the show is just Okay. The premise is at least pretty funny, but the show is so overproduced that it doesn't really do anything with it. Take this scene, for instance, where David asks a girl on a date, and the show has the date already set up, and he takes her, I shit you not, 10 feet away from where she was standing to join him by the fireplace. Just let reality TV shows be reality TV shows. I just want to see people in their real settings, not forced in front of a camera with two other people they've barely talked to just to get some kind of drama stirring. Like, I want to see people being awkward with each other, for real. I don't want to, you don't have to make that up. People are awkward with each other if you put them in a setting where you have to meet new people. I'm not somebody that watches a lot of reality TV shows, even though this is now my second video on a reality TV show, but I give this one about a five out of 10. You ain't missing much, but you would be missing much if you don't subscribe to my channel so you don't miss future videos that come out for really smooth transitions. And on that sick note, we're going to end today's video and my brief synopsis on Too Hot to Handle. I hope you enjoyed. If you already subscribed, be sure to also follow me on Instagram at Gunner Klein. Be sure to follow me on Twitter at Gunner Klein. Be sure to follow me on TikTok at Gunner TV. Gunner TV was taken on the other handles. I don't know what to do about it. With that all said, good day. Mm -hmm.